patiently disappear. Phyllis, Phyllis, who makes the warning bells on the cable cars play the gangs all here? Phyllis, Phyllis, who charms the crabs on fishermen's wharf right out of their shells? Who lights the lamps of Chinatown just by walking in view? saying they declared November Taco Month. <laughs> oh, that's got a couple of things. From the University of California at Santa Barbara and Stony Brook College in New York. College catalogs. Why would they be sending best catalogs? I guess she asked for them. She's going to college next year, isn't she? Yes, that's right, isn't it? Sometimes I forget. Bess is graduating from high school, but... My best going to college next year? It's unbelievable. It was only yesterday that I nursed her at my breast, played patty cake with her, put on her booties, sprinkled talcum on her little bottom. Only yesterday. Oh, I thought you went to that new Woody Allen picture yesterday. <laughs> oh, where have the years gone? It's a very traumatic time when a child first leaves home for college. I remember when Lars first went off to college. All oh, the sobbing and wailing and tears. Finally, the conductor told him that if he didn't stop, he wouldn't let him on the train. <laughs> Mr. Berkowitz. Leo, were you close to your father? My father? Yeah. Were you close to him? Oh, oh, sure. Yeah, he used to take me to the baseball games. He used to take me to football games. He took me hunting, took me fishing. But it didn't work. Leo always found his way home. <laughs> We talk about your mother. My mother has enough problems without you talking about her. <laughs> girls, girls, please. I'm trying to light the throne. Oh, sorry. Well, what's all this about uh, Leo's father and my mother? What's on your mind? Well, Bess is going to leave home soon, in a year, to go away to college, and I realize that Although I've known her for a long time. Since birth? <laughs> right, that although I've known her for a long time, I, I don't really know her, if you know what I mean. And soon, I'm going to have to say goodbye to her. That's why I never got married and had kids. I knew I'd love them so much I couldn't bear to lose them. That's why I have cats. I hate cats. <laughs> Julie, how do I get to know my daughter? There never seems to be any time. And, and I just think if we don't do it now, we never will. She'll go off to college. She'll get married. I won't know my son-in-law. She'll have kids. They'll grow up. I won't know my grandchildren. They'll get married. I won't know my great-grandchildren. They'll grow up. I won't know my great-great-great-grandchildren. They'll grow up. Phyllis, listen, no oh, parent... No wants... way! Let her finish. <laughs> my great-great-great-grandchildren. Phyllis, I don't know what you're so upset about. You and Bess have a wonderful relationship. Why spoil it by getting to know each other? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Phyllis, are we ready now to yeah. try one? All set. Good. Okay, smile. <laughs> hey, check those three. Why? How old do you think that one there in the middle is? Oh, she's old, 25 maybe. Yeah, but women like bridges, man. The older they get, the easier they fall. You want to 
advance? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, go ahead, Ben. No, go ahead. Don't worry about me. Go ahead. You sure? Sure, sure. Go ahead. How you doing? Fine, thank you. You come here a lot? No, this is my first time. Want to go outside? See my van. <laughs> Why, is there something special about it? It sleeps seven. <laughs> well, if I see Snow White somewhere, I'll have her look you up. You meeting someone here? No, I'm here with my daughter. Your friend's dancing with her. That's your daughter? Uh-huh. You two don't look like mother and daughter. <laughs> you look more like aunt and niece. <laughs> Where's your husband? I'm a widow. Uh, tough Brit. Yes. You want to dance? No, I, I don't do any of these dances. You don't have to do any special dance. You just get up there and move, you know what I mean? Just go where the music takes you. I don't think so. You know, for a widow, you've got a great body. Let's dance. Answer me truthfully. Be brutally honest. Are you sick to death of me coming in here all the time and burdening you with my problems? Yes. yes. Good. And once more won't matter. For <laughs> two weeks I have been going everywhere with Bess. Discotheques, rock concerts, uh, professional volleyball games. I like volleyball games. I like oh. to watch them. Not the games so much, the audience. Fascinating. With tennis, all you ever get to see is... But with volleyball, you get to see. Anyway, the point is, it's not working. I still don't feel like I know Bess. Oh, Phyllis, what do you want? What do you mean by knowing somebody? To know what they think, what they feel, what they want. The sort of relationship I had with Lars, I knew what Lars was going to want even before he wanted it, whether it was a drink or to go to the movies or to have his neck massaged. There was only one thing which I could never quite anticipate when he was going to want. <laughs> Liver and onions. <laughs> he wanted that at the strangest times. Anyway, aside from that, Lars and I were so close, it was as if we were sharing the same brain. Too bad he took it with him. <laughs> oh, Phyllis. You and Lars were married for 20 years. You can't get to know someone overnight the way you knew him. 
Yes, you can. Well, about six months ago, I spent a night in a room with five total strangers. All night, the whole night, isolated. No eating, no drinking, no smoking, just sitting, talking, spilling our guts out to each other. After a few hours of that, you know, you drop all your defenses, all the barriers just melted away. We told each other the deepest, most personal details of our lives. <laughs> After that, I thought I... I knew those five people better than I knew any five people anywhere in the whole world. How beautiful. <laughs> well, I don't know. A lot of people these days do seem to get something out of these group encounter sessions. What group encounter sessions? This was a drunk tank in Oakland. <laughs> now, what kind of cereal would you like? Corn flakes, shredded wheat, puffed rice, fruit loops, or frosted flakes. Frosted flakes. I was afraid of that. Puffed rice puts him right to sleep, but frosted flakes turn him into Tony the Tiger. <laughs> uh, you know, this uh, may be a very popular notion. Uh, parents and children sitting down, getting to know each other. When I was young, they didn't have encounter sessions. When my father wanted to know anything about me or my brothers or sisters, he just hired a private detective. <laughs> Here we are. Good night, children. Good night. Good night, Beth. Good night. Good night, Phyllis. Good night. Ready, Beth? Ready, Phyllis. All right. The ground rules are that either of us can ask the other one anything we want to know. And we're going to stay here until we both feel we really know each other. I don't care if it takes all night or even longer. Phyllis, I have school tomorrow. Never mind. I'll give you a note to your teacher. Please excuse Bess for being late. She had to get acquainted with her mother. <laughs> Remember, anything and everything we want to know, we ask, okay? Okay. All right. What do you want to know? Well, let's see. Where should we begin? Uh, it really doesn't matter. Um... Politics. What are your politics? I'm an egalitarian. <laughs> really? Well, there you see. I never knew that about you. Isn't this wonderful? Oh, Beth, I, I never knew you were an egalitarian, but now I do. <laughs> what? What is it, an egalitarian? I sort of believe everyone should be treated equal. I guess you might call me a socialist. I think I'd rather call you an egalitarian. <laughs> Enough in politics. Um, do you believe in God? No. What kind of an answer is that? <laughs> you must believe in God. I can prove to you that he exists. Here, just look out this window. Here, doesn't that prove he exists? You mean the moon and the stars and the beauty in nature? That doesn't convince me. No, I mean all those churches. <laughs> Those churches are the houses of God. What would anyone who doesn't exist want with all those houses? I do not believe in him. I'm just not sure. I'm really an agnostic. My daughter's a socialist agnostic. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it too much, Phyllis. My beliefs change around a lot. Last week I was a Republican Hindu. <laughs> well, of course, your, your ideas are in a formative stage. But you see, I never realized that until tonight. Oh, this is so wonderful. Oh. All right, now, let's see. We've done politics and God. What's your favorite shade of nail polish? <laughs> Beethoven is cool. Good, good. This is so useful. <sighs> well, we've only been at this for five short hours. And already I feel I know you so much better. We should have had this talk 15 years ago. Oh, let's see. I know what we haven't discussed. Sex. What do you think about sex? 
I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. I mean, say there was some alien being from a planet where there was no such thing as sex. And you had to explain to him what sex was and how it works. Could you keep a straight face? <laughs> really cuter than Robert Redford. I really do. Except for the hair. I love Robert Redford's hair. I wonder what you'd get if you put Robert Redford's hair on Paul Newman. Depends on where you put it. <laughs> well, I think I maybe know enough about you for one night. You're an egalitarian. Your favorite painter is Renoir. You like Bach better than Mozart and Peppermint better than Spearmint. With chewing gum. It's the other way around, lifesaver. Right, right. Uh, so you think Jimmy Connors is really shy underneath it all. I can't stand people who keep saying you know all the time and you believe in God. Yeah. No. All right. You don't believe in God. I believe in God. Mm -hmm. I knew one of us did. <laughs> oh, it's six o'clock. I guess maybe we ought to try to catch a couple of hours sleep. <sighs> it didn't work, did it? What do you mean? We didn't really get to know each other tonight. All we learned were a few little facts about each other. We didn't learn really many important things. You know, Phil, I learned one really important thing about you. What's that? You love me? How'd you figure that out? This is probably the dumbest night either one of us ever spent, right? Right. <laughs> so for you to go through it for me, you must love me. A lot. Right. I must love you a lot. <laughs> A heck of a lot. Boy, must I love you. Right. Hey, wait a minute. There's another thing that we proved tonight. Very important thing. 
you went through it too. That means that means Yes, Phyllis. I love you too. like we'll have a nice, quiet breakfast. Just the two of us. What would you like? I think I feel like another bowl of frosted flakes. <laughs> Jonathan, in the morning? <laughs> You're watching ALN. Here's what's coming next.